There we go. Now watch, it'll move. Yep, now it's over there. Okay, I guess we, we have to, I better let these people in. All right, folks, welcome. Uh, the meeting starts at 9.30, so make sure you get here on time. It's the same every single day, no exceptions. Here we go. Chapter 37. Anybody else here? Nope. Chapter 37, James and the Giant Peach. It really was an amazing sight. And in two or three minutes, as soon as the people below realized that this now couldn't possibly be a bomb, they came pouring out of the shelters and the subways to gape at the marble. The streets for half a mile around the building were jammed with men and women. And when the word spread that they were actually living things moving about on the top of the great round ball, then everyone went wild with excitement. It's a flying saucer. They're from outer space. They're men from Mars. Or maybe they come from the moon. That would be quite a sight, wouldn't it? And a man who had a pair of binoculars to his eyes said, they look pretty peculiar to me, I'll tell you that. Police cars and fire engines came screaming in from all over the city and pulled up outside the Empire State Building. 200 firemen and 600 policemen swarmed into the building and went up in the elevators as high as they could go. Then they poured out into the observation route which is the place where tourists stand, just at the bottom of the big spike. If you've ever been on the Empire State Building, that's as high as you can get. All the policemen were holding their guns at the ready with their fingers on the triggers, and the firemen were clutching their hatchets. But from where they stood, almost directly underneath the peach, they couldn't actually see the travelers up on top. Ahoy there, come out and show yourselves. Suddenly, the great brown head of the centipede appeared over the side of the peach. His black eyes, as large and round as two marbles, glared down at the policemen and the firemen below. Then his monstrous, ugly face broke into a wide grin. The policemen and the firemen all started shouting at once, Look out, it's a dragon! It's not a dragon, it's a wampus! It's a gorgon! It's a sea serpent! It's a proc! It's a manticore! Three firemen and five policemen fainted and had to be carried away. It's, it, it, it's a, sh a schnozwanger, cried the chief of police. It's a wang doodle, yelled the head of the fire department. The centipede kept on grinning. He seemed to be enjoying enormously, as you can imagine, the commotion that he was causing. Now see here, shouted the chief of police, cupping his hands to his mouth. You listen to me. I want you to tell me exactly where you're from. Oh, we've come from thousands of miles away, the centipede shouted back, grinning more broadly than ever and showing his brown teeth. There you are. I told you they came from Mars. Whew, I guess you're right, said the head of the fire department. At this point, the old green grasshopper poked his huge green head over the side of the peach alongside the centipedes. Six more big strong men fainted when they saw him. That one's an oink. I just know it's an oink. Or a cockatrice, yelled the chief of police. Stand back, men. It may jump down on us at any moment. What on earth are they talking about? The old green grasshopper said to the centipede. Search me, but they seem to be in an awful stew about something. Then Miss Spider's large, black, murderous looking head, which to a stranger was probably the most terrifying at all, of all, appeared next to the grasshoppers. Snakes and ladders, we are finished. It's a giant scorpula. It's worse than that. It's a vermicious canid. Oh, just look at its vermicious, gruesome face. Is that the kind that eats fully grown men for breakfast? The head of the fire department asked, going white as a sheet. I'm afraid it is. Oh, 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 please. Why doesn't someone help us to get down from here? It's making me giddy, Miss Spider called out. This could be a trick, said the head of the fire department. Don't anyone make a move until I say. Please stop drawing on the book. They've probably got space guns, muttered the chief of police, but we've got to do something. About five million people are standing down there on the streets watching us. Then why don't you put up a ladder? I'll stand at the bottom and hold it steady for you while you go up and see what's happening. Thanks very much, snapped the head of the fire department. 
Soon there was no less than seven large fantastic faces peering down over the side of the peach. The centipedes, the old green grasshoppers, mist spiders, the earthworms, the ladybugs, the silkworms, and the glowworms. And a sort of panic was beginning to break out among the firemen and the policemen on the rooftop. Then all at once, the panic stopped and a great gasp of astonishment went up all around. For now, a small boy was seen to be standing up there besides the other creatures. Up oh, looks like Kyle is here. Gotta be here on time. For now, a small boy was seen to be standing. His hair was blowing in the wind and he was laughing and waving and calling out, hello everybody, hello. For a few moments, the men below just stood and stared and gaped. They simply couldn't believe their eyes. Bless my soul, cried the head of the fire department going red in the face. It really is a little boy, isn't it? Don't be frightened of us, please. We're so glad to be here. What about those others beside you? Are any of them dangerous? Of course they're not dangerous. They're the nicest creatures in the world. Allow me to introduce them to you one by one and that I'm sure you will believe me. Here we go. James has his turn now to be the centipede. My friends, this is the centipede, and let me make it known. He is so sweet and gentle, although he's overgrown. The Queen of Spain again and again has summoned him by phone to babysit and sing and knit and be a chaperone. When nurse is off and all the royal children are alone, small wonder, said a fireman, they're no longer on the throne. The earthworm, on uh, the other hand, St. James beginning to expand, is great for digging up the land and making old soils newer. Moreover, you should understand he would be absolutely grand for digging subway tunnels, for making a sewer. The earthworm blushed and beamed with pride. Miss Spider clapped and cheered and cried. Could any words be truer? And the grasshopper, ladies and gents, is a boon in millions and millions of ways. You have only to ask him to give you a tune and he plays and he plays and he plays. As a toy for your children, he's perfectly sweet. There's nothing so good in the shops. You've got only to tickle the soles of his feet. And he hops and he hops and he hops. He can't be very fierce, exclaimed the head of all the cops. And now, without excuse, I'd like to introduce this charming glowworm, lover of simplicity. She is easy to install on your ceiling or your wall. And although this smacks a bit of eccentricity, it really is rather clever. For thereafter, you will never, never, never have the slightest need for using electricity. At which no less than 52 policemen cried, if this is true, that creature will get some fabulous publicity. And here we have Miss Spider, with a mile of thread inside her, who has personally requested me to say that she's never met Miss Muffet on her charming little tuffet. If she had, she'd not have frightened her away. Should her looks sometimes alarm you, then I don't think it would harm you to repeat at least a hundred times a day. I must never kill a spider. I must only help and guide her and invite her in the nursery to play. The police all nodded slightly and the firemen smiled politely and about a dozen people cried, hooray! And here's my darling ladybug, so beautiful, so kind. My greatest comfort since this trip began. She has 400 children, she's left them all behind. But they're coming on the next peach if they can. The cops cried, she's entrancing. All the firemen started dancing and the crowds all started cheering to a man. And now the silkworm, James went on, whose silk will bear comparison with all the greatest silks there are in Rome and Philadelphia. If you would search the whole world through from Paraguay to Timbuktu, I don't think you would find one bit of silk that could compare with it. Even the shops in Singapore don't have the stuff. And what is more, the silkworm had, I'll have you know, the honor, not so long ago, to spin and weave and sew and press the Queen of England's wedding dress. And she's already made a scent, a waistcoat for your president. Well, good for her, the cops cried out, and all at once a mighty shout went up around the Empire State. Let's get them down at once. Why wait? There, the end of chapter 37. We will be finishing up the last two chapters tomorrow. And uh, I want to remind you that, oh, let me remind you when we get into this, because it's something that you get to choose today in your private channel on Teams. So let's take a peek at today's daily assignment. All right. Remember to get all your work in by tomorrow. That'll be the end of our week three. How did James get the people scared to death of the creatures to calm down? What creature introduction poem was your favorite? Of all the ones we just read. Make sure you're ready with these poetry words tomorrow, the definitions and a way to connect them to the poetic examples that I will be providing. 
For example, if I give you a line of all the same vowel sounds, you should be able to say that that's consonants. If I show you two uh, lines that rhyme with each other, you should be able to tell me that that's a couplet. You'll have the words, by the way. Last day of the Crazy Horse Monument, um, editing. And last chance to look at these poems today to make your portfolio. And again, your portfolio can be uh, presented in any number of ways. It's up to you. And one of them has to be an artistic way. We discussed that. If you're still having problems with it, please ask me in the private channel. I'll be more than happy to answer it. And any of you that have asked us questions, you know we get back to you right away. There might be one exception or two, but usually we get back right away. Here's another chart with the 12 tenses. And again, they have all those fancy words, present continuous, present perfect continuous, but I want you to focus more on what's actually being said with the helping verbs, uh, with the ending of the verbs, and how they all work into making the time period that you want the action to happen. So I wanted to have some fun with this. Um, Create a dialogue, quotes back and forth between characters from James and the giant peach using verb tenses. Here's a link to a good description of each character. And then I list all the characters. And here's what you can do. All right. The centipede said, by the time we get to America, I will have tied all of my boots. So you'll see there that that's a time frame, will have tied all of my boots. Then the worm can respond. Worm responds, what can he say? By the time you get that done, we will, I'm sorry, we will have traveled around the world. Now, I just made those up and I based upon the uh, characters of the book, but they contain verb tenses. So that's what your example should be today. You can choose any of these characters and have them talk back and forth to each other try to make it fun and try to use the verb tenses. Okay, I'd like to know which books you're presently reading. Uh, again, the portfolio is due tomorrow, so please make sure you follow these directions right here. Five poems, and you tell me what types they are, what poetic elements that you used, and you figure out a way to present one of them artistically. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up Rebus puzzles tomorrow. I would love to see some of your Rebus puzzles. And I think, uh, let's see, who was that? Keon has a Rebus puzzle that uh, I hope we get to see today. Ancient Rome, uh, watch the rest of the 18 minute video. So if you watched nine minutes yesterday, you can watch the other nine minutes today. And then a little video about why Latin language is still very important in the world. It's used in all kinds of ways. We've got the climate and geography of our own state of Florida. And there is a quiz today on Florida state symbols. Now, at the beginning of using quizzes, almost everyone was taking the quizzes. Yesterday, only seven people of 28 took the quiz. So that's way, way, way low. That's one fourth of the class. So make sure that you are completing those quizzes. They're fun to do, they're fun to create, and you can even create your own. And family fun today is Florida is the one state in the union of the United States of America where most of the people that live here now weren't born here. And that's not true of any other state. And it's true of Florida. So. Maybe you're from Florida, which would be great, but where are you from? Fun facts of the day all have to do with the insane fun facts of geography having to do with our own home state of Florida. All right, so at the very end of this, if you scroll down past the story, you have three book choices. The Tale of Despero by Kate D. D. Camilla, 
we read uh, Edward Tulane uh, earlier in online schooling, The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis and The Little Prince by Antoine de saint Exploré. So make a choice, put your choice in your private channel and I will see it and we will decide uh, which book that we're going to do by voting. Okay, let's stop there. And now I'm going to unmute you all. Yeah. Silver chair. Silver chair. Silver chair. Now you can unmute yourself if you are Keon. If Keon is here, Keon, uh, what do you have to tell us about long ago and far away? And if you have any ability to pull up that uh, rebus that you did, that would be cool too. So what do you have to say about long ago and far away? That my one sentence with the three words in the glossary. You gonna read it? The Romans had to make a sacrifice to the god Vestal, or he would take all the Vestal right tears away from the people. All right, thanks, Keon. Did you have, uh, do you have an ability to pull up that uh, rebus that you made? Keon? Keon. You have to unmute him. Yes. No, he, he, I have it set up now where you can unmute yourself. Keon, do you have an ability to pull up that rebus you made? Yes. If you can find it, we'll get. If you can find it, you can get back to it and we'll show it to the class uh, or possibly I can find it, maybe. I'm not sure though. Hmm. Let me see if I can. Anyway, we need to move on to Krish. Krish, do you have something to share from long ago and far away? Yeah, but I have a question about um, the, the poems portfolio. Go ahead. Like how do we like, do it? Like, what do we do in the poems portfolio? Like, simply answer the questions. What What do you mean, what do you do with the portfolio? Yeah, like, how do we do it? Well, Krish, I have to be honest with you. I have posted repeatedly the different ways that you can do the port, po poetry portfolio. I will tell you again, you can put it all into a Word document. You can put it into a PowerPoint. You can videotape it. You can take pictures of it. Okay. Uh, but the bottom line that you have to do is you have to write five poems. You have to be able to tell us what kind of poems they are and what poetic elements you used. Then one of those poems you have to express artistically, either by illustrating it, uh, putting music to it, putting a beat to it, however you wanna do that. So it's not complex at all. It's just write five poems, Decide how you're going to turn them in and then tell us what kind of poems they are and what poetic elements you use. Now, what okay. do you have to say about long ago and far away? Okay. Um, the, the, the thing, use three words from the glossary and sentences.